Coming to you live from the Interaction Media Studio in Morgantown, welcome to Positively West Virginia. I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Today, we're going to visit with Kathy Evans. Kathy is the owner of Evans Knob Farm in Brewston Mills, West Virginia. Of course, that's in Preston County. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about our mission here at Positively West Virginia. Every week, we talk with West Virginia business leaders and share their success stories with people just like you in West Virginia and across the country. When we first started this podcast project back in 2017, one of the things we set out to do was to encourage and inspire our listeners with positive business stories from right here in the Mountain State. To date, we've produced more than 250 episodes, and Positively West Virginia is now a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can learn more about our mission of promoting small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. You know, I get to see so many positive things happening in West Virginia business every day that a lot of people, quite frankly, never get to hear about. So my team at Interaction Media and Positively West Virginia, we're working to change that with this show and this whole organization so that people realize you don't have to leave West Virginia to find great business opportunities. They're right here in our state. We want to encourage people to stay here build great companies and organizations, maybe move back to West Virginia, repatriate right back here to West Virginia. All of our guests are people who are actually getting that done too, day in and day out. They're getting it done. And I'm convinced we can all learn from their experiences and even more importantly, their stories. Our guest once again today is Kathy Evans. Kathy is the owner of Evans Knob Farm in Brewston Mills, West Virginia, Preston County. Kathy, thanks for being on the show today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to have you on the show to talk uh, about your story this week. Evans Knob Farm is owned by Kathy and Reed Evans. They're fourth generation operators of Reed's family farm, and they took over stewardship of the farm in 1994. Back in 2002, Reed lost his job with IBM at the time, and Kathy knew it was time to get down to business and take the farm from personal sustenance to an actual working farm and having an income from that. Kathy was one of the founding farmers of the Morgantown Farmer's Market, one of my favorite places on the planet to go to, especially on a Saturday morning in the summertime, serving as president of the association for more than eight years. Evans Knob Farm is still active at the market as well as serving several families in Preston County and Montegalia counties in West Virginia and also Garrett County, Maryland through a CSA. And if you don't know what that is, It stands for Community Supported Agriculture Program, and hopefully we can talk a little bit about that with Kathy. We invited Kathy on the show today to talk about Evans Knob Farm, to share their story, and to give our audience some valuable insight into the company farm she leads here in West Virginia. Kathy, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that very brief intro that I gave, and give us a little behind-the-curtain look into your business. Well, um, like the bio said, we are a family owned farm that has been in, um, in Reed's family for, we're, we're the fourth generation, yeah. but our children and grandchildren are also active here on the farm. So we're pretty proud to have six, six generations working on the farm and, and awesome. um, providing good food for people in the, you know, in the tri-state area. Um, we started out actually uh, with a wool business, uh, we raised sheep, and I learned to shear the sheep and process the wool here at the farm um, from from fleece all the way to finished products like shawls and socks and mittens and hats, and now I'm doing um, some felted sculptures and pictures and things like that. And then um, in 2002, when Reed lost his job with IBM, we decided that um, we needed to step it up a little bit. And we had always had a large uh, garden, um, but our kids had grown up and we didn't really need all that produce. So we started um, trying to figure out how we could get it into the hands of other people. And at the time, the extension agent in Mon County, Beth Massey approached me about um, coming to Morgantown actually and and setting up a booth at a farmer's market that she was starting. And that first, that first summer, there were only three of us that were at the market. And um, through the years, we are now up to, I believe, about 30 different um, farm 
uh, venue, venues there. Um, it's, they're all located within a 50 mile radius of Morgantown. And um, if we don't produce it, we can't sell it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, tell us a yeah. little bit about Evans Knob Farm. Uh, you're in Brewston Mills, uh, mm -hmm. just off of uh, Route 26 up there. How many acres is your farm? We have 130 acres. Um, we're certified naturally grown. So that means that we follow the same standards as the National Organic Program. We don't believe in synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, all that kind of stuff. We do, thing, do things as naturally as we possibly can. We have um, three acres in vegetable production. We've got two high tunnels. Um, we've got about 25 sheep. Um, every year we do about 750 to 800 um, broiler chickens for meat. We usually do 20 to 50 turkeys. We raise a couple of pigs and we also um, will process probably about 18 to 20 lambs for the market as well. Wow. I'm, I'm exhausted just listening to you describe, <laughs> describe it. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Oh, it is a land. lot of work. Well, what's your, what's your 30 second pitch for Evans Knob Farm? In other words, what is it you tell people you do uh, when you meet them? Um, <laughs> We have a one-stop shop. Um, we do meat produce. Um, we do soaps and jams and jellies and syrups and um, just, you know, all the eggs, pasteurized poultry. And our motto is um, where goodness grows. So we like try that. to um, not only provide good food and good products for our customers, we also try to provide a warm, welcoming farm for people to come and visit and rest and recharge and um, just get their heads back on straight. Yeah, so folks can come out there and, and, and check you out right there in Brewston. Yeah, we, we encourage that. We do ask that people um, you know, make an appointment because every day is a busy day on the farm. And um, we don't wanna be in the middle of a big project and have to stop to tour a host or I mean host a tour around the sure. farm yeah. but we will do that if folks are interested in coming out we we do tours I'd imagine that if they show up uh, without scheduling that you'll put them right to work absolutely there's always <laughs> weeds always weeds to pull <laughs> oh that's great well you know one of the things that uh, that I love talking to people like you Kathy because you're a farmer you're a hard-working person you're responsible for, you know, feeding, feeding our, our community, you know, and I, I love that. And, and I'm a big fan of, you know, buying local, uh, first of all, uh, shopping local, uh, especially when you can and, and food and knowing where your food is grown, uh, knowing where, you know, the, the animals that you're, you may be consuming are grown and knowing the people that, that are raising them and knowing that it's done responsibly and, and ethically, that's, that's a big deal, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Talk a little bit about that, you know, sustainable uh, farming and like you were talking about, um, you know, without utilizing, you know, chemically induced fertilizers and all this kind of crazy stuff, the GMO stuff that we read about and everything. Talk a little bit about that from your perspective. Um, when we first started farming, um, actively farming, farming, we, I had some health issues, some major health issues, and I was told that I would be in a wheelchair in 20 years. Oh my. And um, we decided at that point that we wanted to get away from as many chemicals as we possibly could because the disease that I had was seemed to be triggered by a toxic buildup in your system. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was the catalyst for us going organic. And then the more that we looked into it, the more we realized that um, it was our responsibility to take care of this land. You can't just use and use and use and expect it to continue to give. You have to nurture it and feed it and take good care of it. Um, so, you know, we always, we look for things, for, look for ways to, to do just that, to take care of the land. Mm -hmm. um, it, we don't, we just don't use those kinds of things. And it, it was hard in the beginning because we were one of the first farms in this area to be organic. You know, I'm always, I'm out there, I'm doing things that nobody else does. If the, somebody tells me it can't be done, I, I actually had farmers tell me, you can't, you can't farm organically and expect to make anything. Mm -hmm. And I said, watch me. And um, I think I've kind of proven them wrong. That's it, awesome. Yeah, it, it can be done and it can be done responsibly. 
That's awesome. So you guys, uh, you know, you're, you're selling, uh, your products, uh, and a wide variety of products, which I, I love that you're really diverse in your offerings. But the thing that I'm, I'm drawn to is the community supported agriculture, the CSA, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of like a production slash marketing model, you know, where consumers buy a share of the farm's harvest in advance. In other words, we, mm-hmm. my wife and I are part of one here in Morgantown. And it's, it's incredible to be honest with you, like to, uh, you know, have a meal and the food was grown two miles from our house, you know, yeah. you know we don't yeah, live, yeah. we live in a, a neighborhood with an HOA, you know, we can't have mm-hmm. animals, it, but, right. but we know that where they're, they're being grown and we know the farmers that are producing that food. And it to me is like an amazing thing. Talk a little bit about your CSA program and, and, uh, you know, if folks want to get involved, you know, is that something that, 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 you know, that they're able to to do? Yeah, we um, take signups in um, January, February is when we start planning for our new year and um, people can, unfortunately right now my website's down. So, um, we're not going to be, able, I can't refer you there, but you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're on both of those page, pages and you can um, get in touch with me through there and I'll be happy to answer, you know, questions. But our model, we run um, 18 weeks. Uh, our target date to start is the first Tuesday of June, but depending on weather, we may may or may not hit that. Mm. Um, but we will run for 18 weeks. Um, so sometimes it runs to the end of September, sometimes into October well. Um, We have full shares and half shares. Full shares pick up every week, half shares pick up every other week. And uh, like you said, they get a share of whatever is harvested. We do our deliveries on Tuesday. So I get up really early on Tuesday morning and we start harvesting and then dividing everything up um, into however many people we have picking up that day. And we have two different drop sites in Morgantown that people meet us at and um, we have everything set up uh, farmers market style on tables and we just say okay you can have you can have four bell peppers today and you can have a head of cabbage and you can have six tomatoes and you can take as many zucchini as you want <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's how that's how our thing works out that's but we great. also with our CSA model we have a la carte um, options as well they can order egg shares and they can, um, we have a meat share available. And um, we also do like, if somebody decides they want us to bring a whole chicken or a package of chicken breast, they can email me or text me and say, hey, can you bring, you know, whatever it is that they want Mm. to the CSA this afternoon and we will stick it in with the produce and, and bring it and then they can pay for it when we get there. That's awesome. Now, I, you know, the, the question that I have was just listening to that. Is that a, a pretty successful program then? That's, is that a, a, a revenue model that's uh, sustainable for you guys? Yes, it is. Um, it's yep. our, our farm income. Um, it's a large part of our gross income. I'll yep. put it that way. That's fantastic. You know, yeah. The thing, uh, this is just from my perspective, and I, I, I imagine it's the same, Kathy, with your farm, is that, you know, we got exposure to so many cool new vegetables that we didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Like our farm yeah. uh, pro- provides bok choy, you know, yeah. we got a, we got a, uh, I, I think that's called a head of bok choy, uh, right. a bunch of whatever it is, but we got that. And we're like, okay, what do we do with this? <laughs> you know, right. so it kind of gives you some, an opportunity to try new things too. And yes. it, everything is just incredible. And, and, you know, you guys have free range, uh, local, uh, eggs and I can just, I mean, I, you can't go back to store-bought eggs once you have those free uh-uh. range farm raised local chicken eggs. I mean, I just, I think it's awesome. Kathy, I want to ask you, um, you know, what's, what's the thing that you're most excited about uh, right now for your business? We are branching off into um, some herbal products. We're doing um, herbal teas and salves and, and um, ointments and massage bombs and those kinds of things. And I'm just really excited to see how it's being received at the farmer's market. People are loving it and they're coming back and telling me that um, the healing salve that we uh, make that one mom, she came back, her daughter is a type one diabetic and has an insulin pump. And I guess every once in a while she has to change 
she has to change something and I'm, I'm not really clear on that, but it's, it's an open, it's an open area on the skin and she takes that healing salve and rubs it on, on her daughter. Oh. And she said her daughter's friend also is a type one diabetic and has, has had multiple infections. Oh. And she said her daughter's never had one since she started oh. using our salve. Oh. So it's just exciting to have that feedback from our customers and know that we're on the right track and that we're doing the right things and we're helping people. Well, I think, yeah, you you and I met a couple of weeks ago and I I didn't even realize it until we just got (laughs) on this call, but you know, um, that interaction, uh, the, the feedback you mentioned, you know, coming back from your customers, you get to meet them right there in the farmer's market that that you helped co-found. And I think that's pretty awesome because you're getting that real, one-to-one interactions. Somebody can come back, hey, I just had your chicken or I tried your your pickle basket and I just I want to get another one because I loved it so much, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that, is, yeah that, that's, is that kind of the exposure that you get? Yes, absolutely. And that's what I love about direct marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to get that instant feedback from my customers and I like to know, you know, am, am I doing a good job? Am I providing things that are useful and helpful and taste good and are nourishing to you. Um, I, I believe in a whole, a whole being um, approach to what we do because, you know, I just feel that it's important that people know that they are cared for. You know, I'm not there just to make a buck. Yes, that's important Mm -hmm. because we need that money to operate, but I want that person to know that they're they're important to me. Their health is important. Their their mental well being is important. And if being a part of that through the farm is um, mm. you know a good thing, then I'm I'm all for it. Um, I I have no desire to to do a third party, you know, sell re, sell wholesale to somebody. I I want that interaction with my customers. Yeah, that's incredible. And it sounds like you found found your calling for sure. I love that passion that you have uh, for that wellness and, and the well-being of your, of your customers. Talk a little bit about your geographic area that you, where do your customers live? Are they primarily Mon, Mary, or Mon uh, Preston and uh, Garrett counties? Yes, primarily they are. I would say probably our largest, um, our largest customer base is in Morgantown. And um, there's not really a demographic one set demographic that I'm seeing at the farmer's market. We have folks in college that are single, that are regular customers every week. And then I have folks that are well past retirement that are regular customers as well. So it's very broad spectrum. Anybody who is in, in need of, in, in wants a, a nutritious, uh, food source, right? Right. Healthy yep. and well-managed uh, food source. You know, yeah. I love the, I love the way that you were talking about uh, stewarding your land, you know, and making sure that the nutrients get replenished back into the ground. And, and I know that farming is, is, is on one hand, very simple, but it's also very complex at the same very, time, very. you know, yeah. um, working a, you know, a 130 acre farm, how many em- employees do you have? You mentioned you have a couple of generations working on the farm now. What what does that take to to run a farm like that? Well, um, we love to have two interns every season. Um, unfortunately, this season it it didn't work out that way. So we have relied solely on uh, woofers, and I can talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's primarily my husband and myself. Um, we have a friend, uh, Dr. Linda Butler from Morgantown that comes over a couple days a week. And she's always there at the farmer's market with me on Saturday mornings as well. And then um, our grandchildren are here quite often during the summertime. And they have been, they've been with us since they were able to walk. So I have a granddaughter that um, she's turning eight here in a couple of weeks. And when she's here on the farm, she's, she's my shadow. She's with me and she actually, it's kind of funny when we get woofers into the farm, she actually will take them on the tour of the farm and explain how things are done because she has been here so much that she knows exactly what's going on. But as far as um, full-time employees, it's just Reed and I. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. So I got to ask you what a, what a woofer is. Okay. Woofer is, um, there's an organization, it's called Worldwide Organization for Organic Farming. 
and it hooks people up that are farming organically. We sign up as a host. Um, and then folks who want to learn about organic farming, want to experience it, um, you know, uh, many times they just want to get in touch with where their food really comes from. They, they sign up as a woofer and they can get on the woof website and um, type in the area that they would like to visit and the farms will start popping up. And they go through and they read our profiles and they decide whether or not that would be a good fit, whether any particular farm would be a good fit for them. And then they contact us and they tell us who they are and what they want and um, you know what, what time frame that they're thinking. And we've had folks come for just a few days and then we've had folks come and, and only plan to stay a few days and end up plan, staying months. So um, it's just a really good program that um, it's a lot of teaching, a lot of learning on both parts, hmm. not just not just the woofer, but the woof host as well. Now, is this something, uh, I mean, is, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Is it something where you're getting labor and they're getting experience kind of thing? Or is it, yeah. a, is there? Yeah, our, our responsibility as a host is to teach, feed, and house the woofer. So, um, you know, we, they work alongside us every day. We, um, we teach them about insects, about weeds, about plant nutrient needs, um, teach them how to care for the plants. And uh, right now I've got a crew in, in the garden that are weeding a bed of carrots for me. Um, and then we have a cabin and a camper that we, we um, have them stay in. They have their own kitchen that they uh, can prepare food. We provide the staples and also all the produce that they could possibly need, especially wow. this time of year. And um, especially zucchini. And especially zucchini. <laughs> and tomatoes, tomatoes are coming in too. So, you know, they learned they learned to do a lot of um, cooking from scratch. Yeah. And I'll coach them as we're harvesting. You know, you can take this eggplant and you can do this and this and this with that. Hmm. And it gives them the opportunity to try new things and you know, kind of like there's no worries about it because if they don't like it, it's not like they spend a lot of money on it. That's incredibly cool. I love that. Yeah. And that that's and then, the first time I've ever heard of that. Yeah. We also host a, um, a, a porch lunch. Uh, we started that when COVID hit. We used to have a family style dinner every evening in the main house, in the kitchen. Um, we have a farmhouse kitchen, you know, the big dining room tables right in the middle of the kitchen. But when COVID hit, we decided it was too close quarters to have people. So we started doing porch lunches a couple of days a week instead. So I prepare a lunch for the workers and we sit and we talk and, you know, they get to try new, new vegetables or new dishes and, um, and we get to talk about things that they like to fix and prepare. And sometimes they'll make something and, and bring in for the meal as well. That sounds awesome. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. You know, you guys have been in, really in the business of this since around 2002 or so. What mm -hmm. would you say, Kathy, has been your best business moment since you've been in business? Oh, um, probably the um, profitability would be when um, we started cutting chicken up to sell parts. We used to just sell whole chickens. And a friend of mine said, you know, if you would cut this chicken up, you would make three times as much money off of this chicken really? than selling it whole. And I dragged my feet on it for a little while, but um, realized that she was very right. And we started cutting up cutting up our chickens and it's unbelievable. You know, people will come in and buy a hundred dollars worth of chicken breast at a time and they stock their freezer with it, which is what I encourage people to do. I'm all about don't buy just for tomorrow, buy and stock up um, because you never know. And it's, it came true, especially when COVID hit that, you know, there were things that you just was not available, yeah. but I, I didn't worry about it because I've always been, and I don't want to call myself a prepper. I'm not really a prepper, but my grandma always, she lived through the depression. So she was always prepared for anything. Sure. And, um, you know, I'm glad that I followed, followed her, um, leading on that and, 
you know, I've tried to encourage others to do that as well. Don't just have enough food in the house for two days. You need to have, you know, for a couple of weeks at least. It's good stuff. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. On the flip side of that, what, what's what been your worst business moment? When we decided to try meat rabbits. <laughs> that was just... Um, that sounds like a story that's waiting to be told. Oh my goodness. We just, we bought, we bought like eight rabbits and started breeding them and they just were a hard sell at the market, just an absolutely hard sell. Nobody knew what to do with them. The few that did, you know, they would only buy so many and, you know, just it's every day you got to take care of these rabbits. And it was just one more thing that it just seemed like money was going down the drain. A close second to that is just trying to keep up with the weeds. I mean, in a summer like this summer with all the, the rain that we've had, it just, never ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are the worst days. Yeah. That's when you're thankful and appreciative of the woofers. Absolutely. <laughs> See, I, I wove that back into the story. Do you like there that? you go. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's, that's good stuff. It, you know, um, Kathy, uh, well, I, first of all, I want to take a quick break here just to mention our sponsors and uh, for the uh, Positively West Virginia podcast, and they include the State Journal, wvnews.com and interaction media the support we receive from these companies here in west virginia allow us to highlight the incredible things happening throughout the great state of wv our guest today is kathy evans kathy is one of the owners her and her husband own evans knob farm they're over in brewston mills west virginia and preston county kathy let's get right back into it i've really enjoyed our conversation so far What's the vision that you have for Evan, Evans Knob Farm long-term? Long-term, I would like to have the farm in the spot that um, our grandchildren or nieces and nephews can step in when Reed and I decide that we just don't want to do this anymore and be able to make a living at it um, without having to work off of the farm. That's pretty, uh, pretty clear vision. How do you, uh, we talked about the farmer's market. How, how else do you attract new customers to your, to your business? Well, like I said, we have a Facebook and Instagram post and, and I don't post on there as often as I would like to, especially in the summertime, because we're just so busy that we don't have time to do it. Um, but that is our main source of advertising right now. Um, and then doing, I've been on a couple of other podcasts. I've been featured in um, the Morgantown Magazine and Dominion Post a couple of different times. But by and large, it's word of mouth. It's just doing a good job for our customers. And they tell their friends and their coworkers and family members, hey, you need to go check them out. And um, that's that's our biggest source of advertising is our customers. Yeah. What's one of the biggest challenges you face right now? Um, besides the weeds. Besides the weeds, um, just having the manpower to be able to do this. Trying, We're kind of a seasonal operation, and it's really hard to find people that, that want a seasonal job, mm -hmm. that aren't college students that don't have to go back to class in the middle of August. You know, that, that's the biggest challenge. But as a market, um, it seems like there is a large percentage of the Morgantown population, even though we have been there since 2002, I get customers every summer that come in and say, we didn't even know this existed. And I'm like, you know, we've tried radio and newspaper and we've tried billboards and we're like, I don't know how to get to these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just don't know. Yeah, yeah, interesting uh, perspective for sure. Yeah, Kathy, what's one piece of advice you would give to uh, somebody um, who may be thinking about starting a company or a farm, maybe an agricultural thing? You know, I've, I've, I've had folks on here on the podcast that have had lavender farms and all these different types of ag, you know, doing honey and bees and and whatnot. What's what's one piece of advice you would give to them if they're thinking about starting up something in in this space? Oh gosh, one piece. Um, step out in faith. Be bold. Mm. That's great. Yeah, that's, um, you know, there are some things that I wish that we had done earlier. It probably would have put us in a little different 
uh, position right now, um, but just just stay, take that step, take that first step and do it. it. If it. if it makes your heart happy, step out and do it. You know, I talk about this all the time uh, with with folks. You know, we talk about business matters all the time, and I say, you know, a lot of people think that you need to take a leap of faith, right? And you jump off the cliff. Well, you just said it perfectly, you know, take a step, just take uh -huh. that first step. Um, you know, I, 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 I wrote a little thing today um, on one of my social media channels. I said, uh, start where you are and do not be deterred. Exactly. You know, that's what you mean by that. Just take that yep. step, take it. And, and, and mm -hmm. I love the fact that you said, take it in faith. I, I like that a lot as well. Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you do every day, Kathy, that you think contributes to your success? Um, I try to start my day being thankful for where we're at and what we have. Yeah. Um, I try not, I try really hard not to focus on all of the obstacles that need to be overcome, but I try to start my day just being thankful for, for what I have. Yeah, that's great. An attitude of gratitude. I love it. Absolutely. What's one book or even a podcast that you'd recommend for aspiring entrepreneurs? Um, well, I have really, really enjoyed the Thriving Farmer podcast. Mm. Um, it, it is geared towards um, farmers who do what we do. And they just... They interview farmers who are doing things and trying new things and um, just encourage people to, you know, to, to step out and, and give it a try to see, you know, if things will work for them. And then another uh, a book that I really like is um, The Lean Farm, the Lean. and it's written by Ben Hartman, but he goes on the Toyota model. Um, how the uh, founding fathers of Toyota, how they tried to be efficient. And he has taken that efficiency model and applied it to his farm. And I learned a lot of things um, from reading this book about how to make things flow better and easier for the farm. So that on a skeleton crew, you're not completely exhausted every single day. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. We have a resource page on positively West Virginia or positively WV.com. And we have uh, books and podcasts uh, in the links for folks to could listen to those podcasts or buy the books on our, on our uh, website. And I don't think we've had the lean farm and I don't think we've had thriving farmer podcast. I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm a huge fan of podcasts as you can Me tell. Too. And uh, I would definitely check that out. I, I, that okay. sounds pretty, pretty neat. And I, I, one thing that I, um, as you, you were talking about that, I, I get this sense of community, you know, uh, one, one thing that I've learned over the last 19, 20 months is that business is hard enough uh, doing it in a pandemic. You have to have people around you, mm -hmm. you know, and that was something that I've learned. And, uh, you know, being in a community um, like the Thriving Farmer podcast, I can imagine that there's all sorts of inspirational things that you're getting to to pick up on and maybe okay. have those seeds planted in your brain and say, oh, I, I could I could implement that. Or is that mm -hmm. kind of the. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. I listened, I was listening to some of the podcasts uh, when COVID was was first starting um, and we had to shut down the market for a time because it you know, we just couldn't have customers coming in and out. But I, I was concerned about my customers because I knew they depended on the market. Um, so I listened to a podcast and they were talking about um, email lists and ordering online and, and different things. And I'm like, you know what? I've got Square. I can invoice people. I've got an email list. I send out a newsletter every week to my customers. Why can't I send out a list of things that I have available and tell them, okay, I need to know by five o'clock tomorrow evening, send me your order. I'll send you an invoice. You can pay me online and we will meet in a parking lot. And I scheduled, I ended up scheduling them at 10 minute increments 
And I knew who was coming next. And I pulled all of their things out of the coolers, had it bagged up. They pulled in, rolled down their window. We exchanged pleasantries. They popped their trunk. I dropped their things in their trunk, closed the trunk, and they were gone. Wow. It worked out beautifully. You know, they, they got things that they needed. We still had an income. It was a little smaller, but it was still an income. And our customers knew that we were there for them. And it was nice to know that our customers were there for us too. I love that. So it was, you know, it was a two-way street. You know, we benefited and they benefited as well. The win-win, right? That's it was what a win-win. About. You know, uh, just listening to you talk about that, I've been talking a lot about resilient mindset uh, lately. And, and that right there is the perfect example of having a resilient mindset. You know, you were able to innovate, you were able to be a little curious, right, with your own business and figure out mm -hmm. a way forward, a path forward through all this craziness. So my yeah. hat's off to you. That was very Thank inspirational, you. Kathy. Thanks for sharing that. You, we've you. covered a lot in this interview, uh, Kathy. I, I really feel like I've gotten to know you and know Evans Knob Farm a lot better. Uh, is there anything else you think our listeners should know about your story or your farm? We just love people. We love taking care of people. Um, I feel like my calling is to feed people, not just the body, but the mind and soul as well. Mm. And um, we're here for each other. Awesome. I love that. Thank you very much for sharing today with our audience. Kathy, as, as we close out our time here, how can our listeners learn more about Evans Knob Farm and perhaps even get in contact with you? They can email us at evansnob at aol.com. Um, they can find us on Facebook as Evans Knob Farm and on Instagram as Evans Knob. Um, hopefully sometime this winter we'll get our webpage back up, but right now there's just not time enough to do everything. No doubt, no doubt. And we'll make sure we have links to all of that um, uh, on, on a, the Facebook Live and also on the show notes so that folks can check you guys out and be sure to go down. The, the farmer's market's going to be open here in Morgantown. When, when's the, uh, the, the farmer's market closed down for the, for the season? We're open every Saturday morning from 8.30 to noon. And um, typically we close down the first Saturday of um, November is typically our last outdoor market. Um, last year, we stayed out in the pavilion until the weekend before Thanksgiving. Then we took a break and we went out to Milan Park. And I know we're going to be going back out to Milan Park again for the winter market. It'll be every other Saturday from 11 to 1. But I'm not sure exactly what the start date will be oh, out yeah. there and what the ending date in the pavilion down on Spruce Street will be. Well, that's great. And if you, if you come up to the Morgantown uh, Farmer's Market, make sure you look up Kathy Evans and Evans Knob Farm. Kathy, uh, it's been a real honor to have you on the podcast today. I think what you're doing is really amazing. And I love your attitude and, and the advice you passed along. It's very inspirational. And I just want to encourage you to keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Folks, that's a wrap on another episode of Positively West Virginia. Positively West Virginia is brought to you by the State Journal, WVNews.com, and Interaction Media. As we continue on our journey to help share positive stories of companies and people and farms doing amazing things all across the Mountain State, just like my new friend Kathy Evans of Evans Knob Farm, our hope is that we, in some way, equipped and inspired you with this business story. If you or someone you know would be a great guest on the show, drop us a line on our website. We have a little button there. You can recommend folks at PositivelyWV.com. Of course, we appreciate your comments and encouragement. We appreciate and encourage you to share these stories on your social media channels as well and help us get the word out there about all these amazing people doing great things in West Virginia. And be sure to check out our weekly show, the Positively West Virginia Small Business Mastermind every Friday from 11 a.m. to noon, where we bring a panel of business experts from around the state of West Virginia to help small business leaders win in their business. If you, um, if you want to catch up on the video versions of the Positively West Virginia or our Small Business Mastermind, visit our YouTube channel where we have compiled, uh, com compiled highlights of each week's episodes, and a link to that channel will be in this episode's post as well. Positively West Virginia is a 501c3 
nonprofit organization, you can learn more about our mission of advancing small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. On behalf of our entire Positively West Virginia team, until next time, I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Stay positive, West Virginia. For more positive stories of people and businesses doing amazing things all across the Mountain State, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And also, we live stream every week on Facebook Live. Stay positive, West Virginia.